Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at errors in measurement in the General 2 course. Um, this is going to be slightly more challenging than what you did in the Year 11 course. Um, so it's going to be uh, an interesting one to keep an eye on. Um, previously, what you've looked at in the uh, Year 11 course is things such as this. You might have looked at, um, let's say, a me we measured a table. And it is, let's say, 102 centimeters long. And you're asked a number of questions upon this. You're asked to find what we refer to as the precision. We're asked to find uh, what we call uh, the absolute error. We often find the limits of accuracy. And we're then often asked to find the percentage error. So I'm just going to review these things because these still things are important. And I reckon, like for my liking, these are the main ones that are actually tested in the HSC. Um, the Year 12 stuff I haven't seen too much of, to be honest with you. So what I generally do with this one, I look at my 102 centimeters. It's two centimeters is the lowest unit. I put one there make it one centimeter. So one centimeter would be my precision. The absolute error is generally speaking uh, plus or negative half of your precision, which is in this case 0 0.5 centimeters. My limits of accuracy would be plus or minus that error on the actual measurement. So it'd be um, 101.5 centimeters up until 102.5 centimeters. So actually just simply um, plus and minus 0 0.5 off that amount. My percentage error would be then my absolute error, which is my 0 0.5 over the true measurement or the exact measurement of 102. Um, and then I would simply times that by 100. Now, just with that, that first part, so this little bit here, can often be referred to as the relative error before you get to the percentage error. Um, but then I'd simply put that in my calculator and then write that as a percentage, which in this case would be 0.49% to two decimal places. Okay, so that's generally what we have done previously. So what we come up to now is going to be just a little bit more challenging. We're going to get questions like this, for example, where they give you an area. We're going to say this is, let's say, 15 centimeters and 5 centimeters. And they're going to ask you the similar types of questions. Now, they could ask you questions such as, um, you know, what's the precision or what's the smallest measurement. In this case, it's still going to be one centimeter. They might ask you the question, uh, like what is the minimum or maximum, let's say, length of the rectangle, which in this case, the minimum would be, um, f or the error we would know would be plus or minus 0 0.5 centimeters. So the minimum length would be 14.5. Uh, the maximum length would be 15.5. They, they might ask you for the minimum or maximum, uh, let's say height or width, whatever you want to call this. And that again would be your error and plus or minus. So it'd be 4.5 to 5.5. They could then ask you things such as what's the maximum area, which in this case, the maximum area would be the 15.5 times the 5.5, which would then generate an answer of 85.25 centimeters squared. They might ask you for the real length, which would be simply 15 times 5, which is going to be 75 centimeters squared. They might ask you for the minimum area, which you can see where we're going with this. It's just the 14.5 times the 4.5. In that case, that answer would be 65.25. 
But here comes the tricky bit. They might ask you for, and actually I might do this one in, let's say, green, because this is the harder one. They might ask you for the absolute error. Now, this absolute error is not because I think if they ask the absolute error, I think we've already done the absolute error over here for each length. Each length is plus or negative 0 0.5. But in this case, we want the absolute error in terms of area, okay, which is a bit more challenging. So the other way we can think about absolute error is your maximum or your biggest area minus the true area. So in this case, my maximum area is that 85.25. And I'm going to subtract that from the true area of the 75. And I'm going to come up with, don't really need to calculate for that, do I? 10.25. And that's centimeters squared. Now, a lot of people say, well, why'd you do the maximum area minus the true area? Well, the maximum area, if you have a look at the maximum area is 85.25. If I subtract that um, and the real area, I get 10.25. If I do that with a minimum area, I'm actually going to get like 9.75. So that's obviously, we're looking for the absolute possible error that I could have made. Um, and so that's why we use the, the maximum. It's always the bigger area. Subtract the real area. Now they then might ask for, I'm going to scroll this down, so apologies, I'm going to try to scroll this down. Nope, not, oh, there we go, not really working. Um, they might ask you for the relative error or the uh, percentage, percentage error. So the relative error we already know is our absolute error over the measurement. Now obviously if it was just a length it would be the plus or minus 0 0.5 over 15 but in this case we're doing the area so we've got the absolute area of the 10.25 over the original area of 75. Now that's the actual relative area if I want the percentage error then we just simply times that by 100 so it'd be the 10.25 over 75 times 100 and that's going to give me the, the maximum percentage error um, for this particular question, which in this case is going to be to two decimal places, 13.67%. Uh, so it's a little bit different, okay? Now, obviously, if they're asking you just for those things of one length, then you know what to do, okay? We've done that previously. However, if they're asking us of an area, we've got to be a little bit careful, okay? So I'm going to give you a new question. I want you to have a go at this particular question on your own and see what you can come up, you can come up with. So pause it and then see what you can, you can sort of uh, do with your answers. Okay, welcome back. So let's go through these answers. So part A, what is the limit of the reading? Well, we can see it's 3 metres and 4 metres. I might actually draw my triangle there just so we can see that there. So that's the base of 4 metres and the height of three meters. So hopefully you can see what is the limit. It is a one meter limit, or my precision. B, what are the upper and lower limits for the base? The base is four. So the error, I'm gonna put that in brackets, is plus or minus 0 0.5 meters. So we're gonna have 3.5 meters up to 4.5 meters for the base. Um, C, what are the upper and lower limits for the height? Well, that will be 2.5 metres up to uh, 3.5 metres. D, what is the exact area of the triangle? Well, the exact area will be half the base times the height, which is going to be 6 metres squared. E, what is the largest possible area? Well, that's going to be half times the 4.5 times the 3.5. So that's my my biggest area, my maximum area, which is 7.875 meters squared. What is the minimum area? Well, I'm using the lower limits now. So half times 3.5 times 
and that gives me 4.375 meters squared. Uh, G asks now for what is the absolute error for the area of the triangular garden. Now it's the absolute error of the area, not of the size. That's the just of one side. We want the area. So we want the maximum area of 7.875 minus our real length of 6 meters, which gives me 1.875 meters squared. That's my maximum possible area or my absolute error. And then H, the percentage error. So it doesn't want the relative error, just the percentage error. So we've got 1.875 over my real area of 6, which is the relative error, times that by 100, we get 31.25%. And I probably should put a plus or minus there. Okay, look, that's uh, fairly hard. That You can see a lot of questions involved there. As I said, the actual... Um, these area questions with uh, maximum, minimum, and absolute error, I don't see those all too often. I see them more frequently with just the lengths on their own, but certainly this is quite important to make sure that we can do as well. Okay, I hope this made a bit of sense, guys. Answer the questions and ask any questions that you might have. Have a fantastic day.